Okay, hey, welcome to this first tutorial in uh, PD. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go through some different functions in PD, and I thought the best way of doing it was to like show you what I'm going to build, and then I'm going to build something so you can see kind of what you can do, and then uh, hopefully uh, we can sort of as we go along, I'll introduce you to the different things that we use. So this is what we want to build, something that way we can play. So here you can hear both a snare drum and a kick drum. I can stop it, play again. I can control the volume of the kick drum. It's the deep one. Boom. Turn down the snare. Turn down both of them. Turn up the snare, for instance. Okay, so basic, sort of very simple mixing of two audio tracks. Stop and play. Okay, so first of all, when you open PD Extended, then you'll get this window. Now, if you do new, then you'll get a what we call a patcher. A patcher is like a clear canvas. You can place different things in here, and depending on how you connect them and what you do with them, they perform differently. So this is sort of the whole engine. Now, you put stuff here. So you can see we have all this stuff that we can put. So if I put an object, for instance, called, and I call it something, read sf tilde, Remember the tilde. Tilde means that this object uses audio. So read SF is the thing that actually reads in the audio and, and plays it back. Uh, now to open some kind of audio file, we need to send read SF a message. So you can see here uh, we have objects. We also have messages. So I'll just make a message here. And I know for a fact that read SF, in order to open something, that message is open then um, a spacebar, and then the name of the file. So I know that there's a, I've prepared like a file called snare.wav, uh, okay? And now nothing's happened yet. Uh, I just prepared this message, so now it can be sent to here. Now still nothing has happened. Nothing will happen until I actually press this guy. Then the message will be sent to read SF, okay? So uh, let me just do that. Send, ah, and I can see, hopefully it's opened the snare uh, web. Okay, so I also know that in order to play, I need to send this, um, uh, a message still to the read SF called one. So let's do one, ah, no sound still. Okay, I can see here I can turn DSP on and off. Don't worry about that ever. But you can see here DSP says, this is kind of like a, um, like gives me some errors, something I can work with in, in debugging. Uh, Snare.wave, no such file or directory. So it can't actually find this wave, and that's because I haven't sh saved, uh, saved this patcher. So let me just go ahead and save it in, uh, in here. I prepare this. So I'll save it in the same folder as where I have my wave files. I can call it... Uh, oops, tutorial one. Okay, so now it's tutorial one, and now if I do this and I press one, then you can see I don't get. Oh wait a minute, I do get. Sorry. No, I don't get uh, message, uh, an error message. But I still don't hear in sound. So sound is actually playing, um, but uh, it's kind of like you've hit play on the. Uh, on your on your stereo, but you haven't hooked it up to any speakers yet. So in order to get output, so sound out of the computer, uh, we need another object, uh, and that is the DAC object with a tilde. Remember, we're working with sound here. You see, uh, messages don't need that. The, those like messages are don't do anything. Only objects do do stuff. Okay, so here you can. You can actually see that now I'm taking the sound that comes out of the read SF and I'm plugging it into inputs of the DAC. And this is the right and left input. So here, if you're using uh, stereo, uh, uh, if you have some kind of stereo set up, you can hear actually the sound is now only out the right speaker. Uh, and, ah, let me just play again. Here. And now it's only uh, out the left speaker. Okay, so now I'm just hitting it out both speakers. I can stop audio with a serial message. Okay. 
and if I want to start it again, you can see I get this error. So start requested with no prior open. Okay, so that means that I actually need, every time I want to start some, some sound, I need to open it first. So I need to go open and then start. Okay, I can then stop, open, start, stop. Now this is a bit much to ask a user to do every time they want to you know, play the sound. So what, what we can do is we can use another object here. Uh, where do we have it? Bang. Okay. Bang. And then what Bang does, it, it kind of just simulates a press, or it just says to objects, you know, just do it, or initiate, something like that. So I can actually have a Bang here that says open and, and play at the same time. So now I just have this for, for, um, uh, for playing, and I can even put one more Bang here for stopping. Okay. And I have my play stop uh, buttons here. And I can also put a comment. So comments don't do anything. They're just like comments in code. They you know, they just help you. Uh, whoops, play was here, right? And I can, this was just duplicate. So uh, command D, duplicate. Uh, and stop, okay, so play. Okay, now see, uh, I can move this guy around, but not while I'm in this mode. So I'm in a special mode now where I can actually interact with objects that are in my, uh, in my patcher, right? Now, if I want to edit, I have to go into edit mode. So now I can edit, so now I can move around stuff, right? And then if I want to, but I can't interact with, with these buttons, I can't press them. I need to go out of edit mode. Now I can press them again. Okay, so that's edit mode for you. And you're constantly sort of shifting between edit and close mode. The cool thing about this is also, about PD, is that you can change, yeah, uh, I mean, you can hear changes that you do instantly uh, as you go along. So this is really cool. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to control the volume of this guy. Well, volume in, uh, volume in PDs, or volume in sound in general is uh, pretty easy. Got an object. Now the object uh, in this case is a multiplication object. So uh, what we can just do is we can just multiply by let's say 3.5. Well then we've got half the amplitude of the sound or the volume as well. As it were. And I can so this is an attribute like a default attribute that comes into the function. I can just change this. Now, be careful not to go too high. Like normally, you, you say, "Well, the volume, or the, you know, you don't want to multiply the sound to more than one." So keep everything between zero and one. Um, so let's just say default value of half, uh, half the volume here. Now I can even change this dynamically. So let me just put a number box here, and I. Well, so and I'm, I'll just show you what a number box does. If you're in uh, not in edit mode, so in interaction mode, you can actually dynamically change these guys by just clicking inside and dragging. If I hold down the shift key, which I'm doing now, and drag, I can sort of do finer adjustments. Uh, and again, in order to avoid doing you know crazy volume stuff and blowing out your ears, I strongly recommend that when you interact with the you know, volume, hold down the shift key so you can change volume as you go along. Okay. And we can even put, uh, say, like a V slider, vertical slider. This is maybe like a nicer user interface. And we can see this slider also has an input and output. So let's just have a look at what is output out of this slider. So you can see numbers between zero and 127. So a little much to be able to control this volume, right? So what we need to do is scale this somehow. So we can just, if we divide all the, I mean, anything that comes through that, divide it by 127, we get some number between between zero and one, right? So again, an object, and here it's a divide object, divide by 127, and let's just verify, I mean, 
yes, this is happening, but we can't really see what comes out. It's always good to have like verify that what you're doing is actually the right thing. Let's see, yes, okay. So now we're changing it from between zero to 127 to between zero and one there. Okay, so again, let's play here. And now I can just attach this directly to this guy. And as you can see, nothing, I mean, I haven't, this hasn't happened yet. Uh, now, when I when I um, when I make these connections, data doesn't automatically flow through if it's just uh, like variables. Uh, they don't flow until you actually you know make them flow by interacting here. This could also be I mean imagine that we had some kind of system over here that was hooked up to an Arduino or something like that. You could have a sensor, say a distance sensor or something like that, that would then be controlling how high the volume was and the sensor data would sort of activate this which would activate the whole system like that. Okay. Um, okay, so let's uh, we can we can clear this up a little bit, make it a little more sort of friendly. So here we actually have stop, play, we can control the volume. And the, the cool thing about uh, PD is actually that uh, once you have something going like this, uh, all you need to do to make more of these is actually just do this. So uh, um, select everything and then duplicate or command D. And now we have a whole like sequence more here and I can uh, let me just change this so not snare but uh, kick so this is a kick drum and I can hook that up to the, the speakers right uh, let's just try this okay so this is so kick drum change the volume of kick drum you can hear now it's out of sync really, so I want to you know, be able to control this at the same time. So what I can actually do is use the same bang to just control these guys and actually the same stop to control that as well. So now I can stop everything, play everything at the same time. Now everything is nicely in sync. Okay, so that's really all that was to just make a simple little sequencer. Okay, remember I, you know, to open uh, these uh, WAV files, you need to have them in the same folder. So you can see this is my folder here. This is the patch that we're working with, uh, the two uh, WAV files there. Okay. Uh, another little thing you might uh, notice, so let me just turn this down. And we could also do an overall one. Let's do an overall one. And then instead of having this I'll just do an overall volume here Oops. So now this is an overall volume so here I'll play here I control the the relationship so let's say I want not too much kick, more snare. So I control the overall volume by here, I control the relationship between these two. Okay. Uh, now, what I want to have you notice is, you can see these are a little fatter, uh, these connections, than, than these connections, right? And that what it means is that here is actually, uh, there's a different kind of data that's flowing here than here. Okay. Here we're just working with variables just essentially numbers right and numbers will only flow when there's actually something coming in or something that activates it here signals are constantly flowing okay and they represent sound in this case so you see sound starts to occur here where the read sf actually uh, outputs some sound this is then scaled scaled again and output okay and these here are the the controls that we set up to scale these in the right uh, another thing to be very uh, aware of is uh, about inlets and outlets. So it's not, uh, you, know, you can see some objects have, for instance here you have not only just one inlet, you have two inlets. And it's very uh, important that you understand which inlet to use. And, and how do you do that? Well, 
A very good thing about PD also is that every uh, every object has a help file. So if you right click and choose help, you get actually like a little patcher that gives you a little representation of what you can use this object for. So here you can see this is the actual object. You can actually take attributes. Okay, so we'll get back to that later about what that means. And you can see uh, this is what we use to start and stop playback. This is what we set up before. This open stuff you can use to open uh, different things. Uh, here you can see it's connected to these multiplication objects that scale down the volume and output to the DAC. And what's really cool is that um, these are actually just patches. So again, you can um, go into edit mode and you can just grab stuff here. So I can just do this, uh, copy, and then like uh, paste it into you know whatever I'm working on. So this is really cool. And every object has... So these objects are not maybe the most interesting, but every object has uh, some kind of a help file. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I also see uh, some of you guys uh, uh, mix between, you know, is it an object or a message? So they look kind of like, you see, this is definitely an object. It's square sort of all the way around. This is a mes message. It has sort of this flag-ish sort of ending. So this is very important to notice. Um, yeah, 